So I'm going to start with the CLI based workflows. So let's see how we can create these detections on the command line as if we were you know, doing security engineering with uh, more of a developer oriented workflow. So why do you really want to do this in general? So with Panther, I mean, we have a UI that you can use to create these detections, but there's a number of advantages for adopting these CLI based workflows. So for one, your local ID may be better suited for your coding habits or your team's coding habits. Two, uh, making changes to the built-in detections and authoring your own becomes more organized when you can use things like internal forks and, and version control systems, things like that. Um, and you can also pull upstream changes that that Panther Labs, like the company, we actually make. So we have a team of analysts internally that are are constantly crafting these detections, making changes, adding new ones, and basing our detections off of common patterns and um, standards like MITRE ATT&CK, CIS, PCI, and things like that. And then the third reason why you should really adopt this command line based workflow is that um, once your team does code review and things like that, um, you can you can have uh, automatic changes deployed to your CI. Uh, you can have these changes automatically deployed via your CI CD system. Um, so it's a very automated workflow. You don't have to manually make changes in the UI and at scale, this is just more stable and uh, better patterns. So finally, I mean, we get also a history of changes uh, that are easily revertible. So we can say, we can see the evolution of our rules. We can go back two or three versions if we need to, and we have everything accounted and uh, attributed in our VCS. So if we look at the, the components of these detections, so when we store them in source code, they're stored as two different files. So one is the Python detection file, and then the other one is a YAML file that contains metadata about this detection. So what we'll do next is we'll kind of step through how this mapping works between the Panther UI, which you may be familiar with, and then the YAML files. So the metadata is really all the context around our detection. So it's what logs are we going to process? Uh, how is the grouping going to work? What are the tags associated with the detection, which are just categories around uh, this, this type of alert? You can control deduplication, you can control thresholding, and all these other things that help analysts do their job better. And then the Python function itself is the second file, and this contains all the logic that gets applied over these events that we're determining in the YAML file. So the YAML file says, I want to process G suite events, and then the Python file is the actual logic to go through those parsed events and determine if something suspicious is happening or not. And this Python is, is just normal Python. There's no DSL. It's just you know, exactly what you would get from writing Python locally. And then finally, you can also define unit testing code. So this is in the form of JSON-based events. And generally, what you'll see is multiple scenarios are being defined. And I'll talk about this a little bit more in depth later. but. Um, anything you see in the YAML file is actually also available in our UI. So you can see the exact same um, test cases and you have all the same functionality there. And a huge benefit of doing this testing is that you can really protect against regressions. So what you can do is, you know, if you're making a change to a rule, for example, and here what I'm doing is I'm essentially breaking this rule and making it now invalid. I have some test cases that will catch this regression. And if I try to run this, I'll see that one of them now starts failing. And then the UI, if I try to update it, it's not gonna let me update it because my tests are, are not passing. And we find that this is just a really great guardrail to prevent bad rules from going out and then your team getting flooded with alerts, which we, we, we don't want. Um, and this workflow also exists in the, in the command line. So if tests don't pass, they never get uploaded to Panther and I'll, go through that next. So to get set up with the CLI, it's really simple. It's just a pip package, um, pip install Panther analysis tool. Uh, this tool is also open source. So we have a repository that's called exactly the same thing, Panther analysis tool. So you can go check that out if you're interested. Um, there's three main commands to worry about. So the first one is the test command, which is essentially the same thing as 
what you saw in the UI where I clicked the, the button, it showed the two passing, one failing. It's essentially doing the same thing. Um, you can also filter based off of which path your detections exist in. You can filter based off certain attributes in that YAML file as well. So if you wanted to test all of your rules that have a, a certain tag, you could do that or of a certain type. Generally, my workflow ends up being, I wanna test one or two different rules at, at the same time because I'm generally making changes or developing, making a fix, things like that. So it's really robust. It allows you to do uh, a lot of different combinations to, to test your rules. The second command is zip. And zip essentially prepares the detection to be uploaded to Panther. So in our UI, we actually have a bulk uploader that you could do. Um, but alternatively, you can run both of these commands with upload. And let's actually step through and I'll, I'll show examples of how this all works. So for unit testing, what you're seeing here is I'm running Panther analysis tool test and I'm looking at the S3 rules. So I ran all six of the rules that we have there or five of the rules rather. But let's say I wanna take a specific rule and test that one. I can actually use the filter command, which is what I'm doing here. And then I can filter by that rule ID and then I can get the, uh, the output and I can also see the uh, generated dedupe in, in titles, which is really helpful for understanding how our, how our specific rules are gonna get grouped based off of certain events coming in. And then if we wanna upload this to the UI, what we need to do is we need to actually make sure our environment is set up properly. So what you're seeing here, if, if you're familiar with AWS Vault, uh, the way that this works is it actually stores your uh, AWS credentials in, uh, in a very secure vault on, on your computer. And then essentially it will get temporary credentials, return them back, and it will manage all that for you in a, in a really secure way. But the gist here is that you need to have your um, environment set up in a way where you get access into uh, your Panther uh, deployment. So the way this works for our hosted customers is we end up creating a, uh, an IAM role or an access key that gives you that access. Um, or if you're deploying Panther community, you would just create an IAM user in your AWS account. And then when you run upload, it uses the region that's in your environment and it identifies the Panther install in that region. And then it does a couple of things. So the first thing it does is it runs those unit tests, which is what I was saying before. If this doesn't pass, then it doesn't proceed to the next step, which is zipping. So it creates a zip file. It says it found the environment variables, which is great. And then it tries uploading it to the UI. And then there you go. Uh, after it uploads, we get a response that sort of gives you a summary and the breakdown of uh, all the rules and policies and globals that were uploaded and changed. And sorry about that. So let's go to the UI upload. So if we want to do this within the, the browser itself, we would take that zip file that was generated in the last command or in just the zip command, and then we can select it from our local directory. We can upload it and then it's essentially the same workflow, but you know, from the UI. The advantage of doing it from the UI is you don't need to have uh, your local credentials set up. You would obviously authenticate through our normal mechanism and then you get the ability to do uh, just about the same thing. Um, the huge advantage before I move on um, with having this CLI based upload is that you could actually run this in CI CD. So you could configure um, whatever container you're running in your continuous de deployment to have those same credentials. And then um, you can automatically upload it to Panther from there. So that saves a ton of time and it really makes the, the process super fluid.